I just read a very insightful article from Inc.com, which can be summarized by, there's nothing soft about good communication skills. Your communication skills are the great equalizer, and if you're in a technical or engineering role, you should care more about your communication skills than your technical skills as you go through your career, in my opinion. The reason I say this is because emotional and social intelligence, or EQ and SQ, are more important as you rise up the ranks because your technical chops will matter less as you get to a more strategic level. You're going to have to interface with more people, policies, and organizations besides your little group that are gonna make your communication skills paramount. So if you're an engineer and you don't know how to get your point across, you lack the communication skills to really distill a concise message for your intended audience, that's something that's going to waste a huge amount of time it's gonna cause incredibly cyclical discussions. So you're gonna have, you know, looping and looping and looping and looping and never really getting anything done. Or you're gonna be having way too many meetings because nobody knows what to ask. And if you lack communication skills, you're never going to be able to grow that really strong professional network that's going to let you become that top achiever that you wanna be. You need to have a strong professional network and people that will come to your aid when the need arises. The people that have the best networks are shown time and time again to be the ones that bubble up to the top, and that's what I want for you. That's the main reason why I have EQ and SQ as two thirds of what I have behind me here. Notice IQ, or your technical chops, is only one third of what I have behind me. So you have to start with your emotional intelligence, or EQ, so you have how you feel, so you have your awareness and regulation to how you feel. You have empathy, so you're starting to interact with others and take on their feelings, and motivation, so you can stay motivated when times get tough. And then we get over to social intelligence. That's really the crux of what we're trying to get across here in this video, which is your communication. So your social awareness and social facilities. So how well can you understand what's going on around you and your group or whoever you're interacting with and how well can you actually get things done? So there's your social awareness. How well do you understand? And your social facilities. How well can you facilitate change? If you lack communication skills, you can see there's going to be big problems once you get into a group setting or really just sending one person an email. I'll take us back to one of my favorite quotes, which is attributed to Ben Franklin amongst many other people. The quote goes, I'm sorry this is long. I didn't have time to make it short. I personally think that completely encapsulates what I'm trying to get across here, because if you don't really truly understand what your intended audience of whatever communication you are trying to do is, how do you expect you're going to be able to tune your message and make it incredibly concise for that intended audience? How do you expect to make a message that's digestible for someone if you don't even know who the person is? So say I need to buy an incredibly particular engineering item and I need to talk to a supply chain person to procure it. Well, I shouldn't be asking the supply chain person for super duper technical engineering information about those things. I should talk to my engineering peers and then go back to the supply chain people saying, no, we actually need this particular part number. There's no deviation. We can't deviate at all. I don't care if the prices are different. This is the thing we need. And if you do that now, okay, so for my example here, a supply chain, I also know they're gonna need some sort of number to charge it against. They're gonna to need to know if it needs to be here with any sense of urgency. So I can basically tune my communication with them to encapsulate every question they're going to have. And this is gonna be great for them because they don't have to come harass me 10 times for some relatively easy task or something that should be easy if everybody's paying attention. And they're happier because I haven't given them a huge amount of work where they have to chase me after all these little things. And I'm happier because I can almost set it and forget it. So I'll send my request over and say, hey, let me know if you have any questions. I think I covered everything you're gonna need. And there you go. That's a very simple example of how I have understood the process, my intended audience and the requirements. And there it is. That communication is going to be very easy. It's not gonna cause anyone any heartaches. And it didn't really cost me any extra time. The extra time was me learning that process over months. So I had to interact with it several times. And after I did that, now I understand it and I understand the recipient and the whole process overall. And this is one of the things that more senior engineers actually bring to the table because they understand the processes at a much deeper level than an entry level person. So you have an engineer who basically can see several steps ahead. They're almost like a wizard where they, they literally are seeing pitfalls. It's like, wow, that's a great idea, but have you thought about this? And they, the thing they're asking about is five steps from now. And it's like, wow, this person really knows what's going on. That's crazy. But that really is where your senior level technical expertise really shines through. 
So you've seen these processes, you've gone through them dozens of times, and those little nuggets of information, those little diamonds that come out over time, that's the stuff that you need to cherish. And you need to communicate that well to your organization. So if you're still trying to climb the ranks at your engineering organization, you should be focusing on your communication every single day. Just literally every day. You need to tune your message better and try to get feedback on if anything was misconstrued or if you're flowing all of the work you're doing back to your management appropriately. Are you actually taking credit for all the work that you're doing? Because not getting credit for work that you're doing can be incredibly frustrating. I can definitely empathize. Because if you are doing a whole bunch of extra work and nobody's really seeing it and you can't take any credit, that's gonna be really frustrating for you when it comes to a promotion and raise time because you're gonna feel like you're an absolute rock star, but the organization isn't gonna see the value because you haven't been flowing it to them correctly. Which you should take on, not as a negative, but as an opportunity for you to learn how to communicate better. So how are you doing that? Are you in this kind of situation? care about your communication, and this will help you alleviate some of your frustrations over the long term. Speaking of alleviating frustrations, you really need to start focusing on your emotional intelligence, and there's no better place to start than with this playlist I've got for you up here. Or if you're ready to move on to social intelligence and start working directly on your communication with your peers, get started on that playlist right down here. Or just keep doing what you're doing. But be prepared to get the same results you've been getting.